In the third episode of Yuri on Ice, our protagonist Yuri Katsuki struggles to find his inspiration for his upcoming figure skating program, On Love, Eros. The program is based on the Greek word for passionate sexual love, with Yuri taking on the role of a seductor through bold and suggestive choreography. Yuri is unsure of what his concept of Eros is. As a rather nervous and underconfident young man, he doesn't know how he relates to the idea of sexual love and pleasure. How can he embody something he can't see in himself? He contemplates this quandary at dinner, drooling at the sight of a pork cutlet bowl, or katsudon, in front of him, and then he has a revelation. I get it now, he exclaims. Pork cutlet bowls. That's what Eros is to me. For a series about competitive figure skating, food is surprisingly important to Yuri on Ice's story. The moment described above is rather humorous, but it reflects the broader role of food in Yuri on Ice food as love and desire. Intermingling with love, desire, and victory, food plays a central role in developing the relationships of Yuri and Ice's characters, romantic and platonic. The show also draws connections between food, desire for victory, and gender. Let's dive into it. So at the start of the series, Yuri loses at the Grand Prix Final, skating's biggest event. He falls into a depressive slump, which abruptly ends when Victor appears at his house with no warning and demands to coach Yuri. The relationship, which evolves into a romance, is the crux of the series, and it is intertwined with food. Visually, Yuri's slump is portrayed through his figure. He has gotten quite chubby, having abandoned his fitness regime and taking to eating pork cutlet bowls, katsudon, with wild abandon. Yuri tells us that he usually only eats katsudon after winning a competition, but he gave up on that role as he became depressed. Immediately, food, specifically katsudon, is connected to a desire for victory. Yuri's love of Katsudan is enabled by a love of winning. But Yuri's desire and love have faltered at the start of the series, as he fails to find meaning in ice skating or in his life as a whole. However, when Victor enters his life, love floods back into Yuri's whole world. He begins to enjoy skating again and returns to his rule about Katsudan. He even tells Victor, I want to eat pork cutlet bowls with you, Victor. I want to keep on winning and keep on eating pork cutlet bowls. Yuri early in the series is too underconfident to state that he wants to win for himself or for Victor. Instead, he ties his desire for victory to food, specifically Katsudon, as a way to make it more manageable. A slight side note, Yuri's surname Katsuki shares the Katsu sound with Katsudon. Both Katsu sounds are homophones with the verb Katsu, meaning to win in Japanese. Even linguistically, Yuri's desire for food and victory are interwoven. Additionally, Victor's full name also relates to victory. Victor obviously means victor, or winner, with Latin origins, and his surname Nikiforov means son of victory in Russian. So, winner McWinnerson. Yuri's desire for victor and victory are again connected through language. Back to food, though, Katsudon remains important. The first program that Victor choreographs for Yuri as his coach is the aforementioned On Love, Eros. Yuri has no idea how to embody Eros on the ice with so many sexual and provocative movements that he doesn't know how to approach. That is, until he realizes what he desires most is pork cutlet bowls, is Katsudon, combining sexual and literal appetites in his performance. Katsudon is Yuri's eros, his desire. This is played for laughs. However, as the series goes on, it becomes clear that Yuri's concept of eros is not just tied to Katsudon, but to Victor. Yuri begins his first public eros performance in episode three by internally saying to himself, who am I dancing for? I know who. He then gives Victor a smirk before starting the program, and Victor responds to the smirk with a long wolf whistle. Yuri's desire for Katsudon and Victor also plays with gender presentation. Initially, when describing the routine to a friend and owner of the ice rink he practices in, Yuri describes the protagonist of the Eros routine as a playboy, trying to pursue the most beautiful woman in town, only to cast her aside after successfully getting her to fall in love with him. This framework fails to give Yuri proper inspiration, which leads him to see himself as a sexy pork cutlet bowl. Though Katsudon provides a partial breakthrough, Yuri says to himself that he still lacks what would serve as the backbone this program needs. But when Victor offers up his old costumes for Yuri to use in his first public performance, Yuri is drawn to a costume that Victor says was designed to suggest both male and female genders at once. Later, when Yuri begins his first public performance of Eros, the episode cuts back to the night before. Yuri heads to his ballet teacher Minako's studio, asking her to teach him feminine movements. He explains, Trying to be the playboy isn't me. I want to be the most beautiful woman in town who seduces the playboy. Minako, in the audience watching, observes that this change allowed him to integrate his emotions into the performance. Identifying himself with a pork cutlet bowl was not quite enough to find his arrows. 
identifying himself with a woman allowed Yuri to succeed. In his inner monologue later, he describes his arrow's persona as a pork cutlet bull fatale that enthralls men, tying in both his identity as a femme fatale and a sexy bull of Katsudon to perfect his performance. Scholar Lori Morimoto observes that, quote, gender transgression is the rule rather than the exception throughout, end quote, Yuri on Ice. Quote, rather than androgynous, Yuri and Victor's gender identities are explicitly coded as both slash and through such tropes as the revealing of Victor's bare shoulder and flat chest from a slipped yukata and the cross-gender seductiveness of his lifting Yuri's chin with long, delicate fingers to meet his eyes. Similarly, the skating costume Yuri borrows from Victor, a full-body leotard with half skirt and spangles on the side, as well as the performance he skates following his 11th hour realization that he experiences the eros of his music more as a woman than a man, is equally, if not more, gender blended." End quote. Yuri's gender blended performance allows him to find his eros, and in turn begin to show his true feelings for Victor. Having told us he knows who he's dancing for in the story of the routine, Yuri places Victor as the playboy being seduced and himself as the beautiful woman. Yuri is unable to perform the Eros routine by simply imagining himself as a man seducing another man. Food and eventually gender provide alternate ways for him to understand his relationship with Victor. Though their dynamic is charged with some romantic tension from the very beginning of the show, mostly via flirtations from Victor, it takes Yuri time with his performances to make romantic gestures in return. By the time the two share their first kiss on the ice, initiated by Victor after Yuri incorporates Victor's signature quadruple flip into his free skate program, the romance seems to have been a steady progression, with Yuri gaining confidence and Victor learning how to respect Yuri's boundaries. This is completely flipped on its head in episode 10 when it's revealed at the banquet following last year's Grand Prix final, the competition Yuri lost which prompted his slump in episode 1, Yuri got incredibly drunk on champagne. He flirtatiously and confidently danced with Victor, hugged him, and asked him to visit his hometown and become his coach. Victor's eyes twinkle and he appears to be very taken with Yuri. Yuri, who does not remember this happening, is informed of his drunken escapades over a dinner with Victor and several other skaters. Victor's motivations, which seemed random and mysterious until now, were all prompted by Yuri encouraging him to do exactly what he has done. Food, and specifically drink, once again plays a critical role in the love between Victor and Yuri, kickstarting their relationship without the viewer realizing until late into the series. Katsudon and its ties to victory may have helped Yuri on his way to find his Eros, but drowning his losses in the food and champagne at the Grand Prix final banquet launched Victor's affections for him long before Yuri declared himself to be a sexy pork cutlet bowl. And it is at a dinner with friends over a delicious variety of dishes that brings this all to light. Food not only sparks new feelings and gives our characters new ways to express themselves, it also helps reveal the truth. Besides romantic love and a love of victory, Uranus also explores familial love through food. Victor choreographs a program called On Love Agape for another skater, 15-year-old Russian rising star Yuri Poletsky, aka Yurio. He trains with Victor and Yuri Katsuki at the beginning of the series. And just as Yuri had to find his eros for his program, Yurio must find his agape to perform. Agape, another Greek term for love, refers to an unconditional and transcendent love, the polar opposite of Eros. This is a challenging task for Yurio, his young and hot-headed nature being ill-suited for a pensive and pious love. However, Yurio has a revelation about what agape means in connection to food. His agape is found through memories with his beloved grandfather, Nikolai. The first time the viewer sees Nikolai, he comes bearing fried piroshki, which is revealed to be a special food he always makes for his grandson. Just as Katsudon is tied to Eros and victory, Piroshki is tied to Agape. Piroshki is a marker of the familial love between grandfather and grandson. Piroshki gains another platonic meeting later in the series. Yurio's grandfather hears about pork cutlet bowls from Yurio, and he creates a new treat for his grandson combining the two dishes, Katsudon Piroshki. Piroshki is stuffed with the ingredients of Katsudon. Yurio loves the Katsudon Piroshki, but he gives most of it to Yuri as a gift in a short but tender scene at the end of episode 9. After the Rostelecom Cup in Moscow, the last major figure skating event before the Grand Prix final, Yuri is contemplating his middling performance and how he's planning to ask Victor to step down as a coach after the Grand Prix final, even if he wins gold, when Yurio arrives. He shoves Yuri to the ground and calls him Katsudon instead of his name, as he has for the entire series to demean the elder skater. Yurio and Yuri are rivals, but all the animosity in their relationship comes from the much younger Yurio. Yurio declares that Yuri can make no excuses for his poor performance or get discouraged, considering Yurio did better than him, achieving a personal best score, but he still lost to Canadian skater JJ. Before Yuri can respond, Yurio throws a paper bag at him, containing the Katsudon Piroshki. 
Turning his head and speaking nonchalantly, he says Yuri can have it, noting Yuri's birthday is coming up. The show cuts to Yuri standing and eating some, murmuring that it's Poroshki before taking a bite, and exclaiming that it's Katsudon once he has it in his mouth. Yurio gleefully explains it's his grandfather's new Katsudon Poroshki, and they both marvel at how delicious it is. When Yurio gives Yuri the Katsudon Poroshki, they share a moment of real friendship for the first time. From a few minutes into episode one until this moment, Yurio has been physically and verbally vicious to Yuri, and Yuri has politely ignored Yurio's taunts. Though they trained together for weeks and competed with one another several times, Yurio never overcame his hostility towards Yuri, and Yuri never challenged Yurio's treatment. In terms of temperament, the two are opposites, embodying the divergent cultural stereotypes of Japan and Russia. Yuri avoids confrontation and is constantly apologetic, while Yurio is very straightforward and often abrasive to anyone and everyone. However, as scholar Tian Yi Chao describes, the Katsudan Poroshki, quote, can be seen as a metaphor of cultural hybridity, a new identity in between. The hybrid pastry succeeds in mingling the Japanese and Russian ingredients into a new cross-cultural product of wonders." End quote. In this way, the new food acts to bridge both the emotional and the cultural gap between Yuri and Yurio. There is platonic love between the two of them, as well as a love and respect for one another's cultures. This love crystallizing at this exact moment has an added resonance since the two are together in Moscow, Yurio's hometown. This parallels Yurio's stay with Yuri and Victor in Yuri's hometown, the fictional Hasetsu in Kyushu, at the beginning of the series. Katsunon Poroshki intertwines their cultures in a tangible and delicious form, a union of cultures and friends. Zooming out, why does Yuri on Ice turn to food to work through these themes of competition, love, and desire? What does it allow the series to do? Is love more digestible when presented through food? Much like Yuri himself, I think the series has to ease us into embracing love and desire. The depth of Yuri and Victor's relationship is so much more than we see at the outset, but we're given information about it like bites in a meal. Katsudon is Eros. Katsudon is a femme fatale. Yuri is Katsudon. Yuri is a femme fatale seducing Victor. On the ice, at a banquet. All this being revealed over a dinner. Even with Yurio, we need to unpack his relationship with Yuri a bit before we can get into it. Food can do all of this. It's something visual, approachable, a little humorous, that conveys a sense of how the characters feel about one another. The show's thesis is about love in all its forms, and food is one way the cast demonstrates their love for each other. From Yurio's peace offering of Katsudon Poroshki to Yuri embodying Katsudon to impress Victor. Yuri might put it best when he says in his speech about his skating season theme in episode 5 that something like love exists all around him. His words will prove true again and again throughout the series, even down to the delicious food and drink before him. Hello, Yuri on Ice Nation! Hope you enjoyed my return to the familiar waters of analyzing one of my all-time favorite shows. You may have wondered, hey, why is Lady Ania quoting scholars in this one? Well, I actually wrote this as a much more formal essay for a college class about food in Japanese media. Once I got the assignment, I had wanted to write about Yuri on Ice, unsurprisingly, so I decided to look and see if people who think about media for a living had actually written stuff on it when it came time to write my paper. And they had. And when I converted my academic paper into this video essay, I ended up keeping some of their thoughts because I thought they were super interesting. But I hope my own contribution to the small field of Yuri on Ice studies felt distinct too. If you missed my last video, it's about the female characters in My Hero Academia, and I'm quite proud of it, so give it a gander. If you are a Yuri on Ice diehard like myself, check out my video about the Ice Adolescence trailer, and if you haven't seen my video about the show's best episode, check that one out too. I hope wherever you are, you are healthy and well, dear viewer. Thanks for watching. Until next time!